Mom, I just want to add, I remember one moment early on after my diagnosis, we went uh, to the hospital for a doctor's appointment. Um, my oncologist, the wonderful, brilliant, late Dr. Holland, looked at you and noticed you had lost weight. And I remember him very sternly saying to you, you have to take care of yourself so that you can be strong for your daughter. And it's not open to negotiation. You have to prioritize your health. Um, and I was struck by that. Um, and I wonder how it struck you when he said that. Yeah, what came, what, what he added is that he said, your daughter is going to need you in the long run. And I think as a caretaker, when we have, uh, you know, we have, when we have the announcement of a, of, a, of, a, of a grave illness, you get into this fight and flight response and you, you are the alert all the time and you don't realize how long it might be. And it, and it was, so that's what struck me about what he said. I knew I had to take care of me, but I thought I could let it go for a little while because I needed so much to, to, to do my, my best. So it is an important thing to know that you don't need to be on the alert all the time and you can allow some normal life in between, which I didn't know. I thought when someone has cancer, that's it. All they have is cancer. No, that's not true. There are lots of times in between difficult moments or events in the illness when you can not go back to normal, but you can allow yourself to, uh, to yeah, and I would not allow myself. I, even my, my friends I was staying with were insisting, what they say, oh, have a friend you, we want you to meet. You know, spend the, take the day off and go and meet her in Brooklyn. And I couldn't do that. I thought I had to be there with Solika every day. Mm -hmm. So something I could, uh, I will have to remember, I could share it for people who are having to face this, is that remember that, yeah, it's going to be, it might be in the long run and, you know, these times of response in between, of breath in between are so important and eating. <laughs> I know my, my friends and, and family would have, you know, been very sad to hear me uh, express probably just how guilty I felt, but I think it's, Im it's impossible not to feel like a burden when something is happening in your body that is having this enormous ripple effect that hasn't just upended, you know, your own life, but, but the lives of everyone you, you care most and love most in the world. And so I felt guilty about how much time and, and care I required. I felt guilty about inevitably the time and care that that took away from my brother. I felt guilty about the financial strain that it placed on my family, uh, about the fact that my mom had turned away from her work and was spending most of her, her, her time that first year uh, focused on my needs I felt guilty every time my dad would come back from one of his daily walks in the woods and his eyes would look bloodshot. Um, I felt guilty all the time. And, you know, I think part of it was that I, I wish so badly, of course, that this hadn't happened to me, but that I could somehow spare them out of worry. Um, and of course, you know, that wasn't possible. And I knew that then. Um, but it was this sort of constant companion. Um, and the only thing that seemed to sort of alleviate it a little bit was uh, later when I had the opportunity to meet fellow patients who, who became my friends. Um, when I got the chance to speak to people who had lived what I had lived and to talk about things like guilt and to understand that that sentiment was a shared one. Um, and that in a way it was normal. It didn't make it any less real. Um, but at the very least I knew I wasn't alone in that feeling of guilt. I was struck when I read the book, I still found out about quite a few things when I read, uh, in between two kingdoms about that, about the fact that Suleika felt guilty about it and made me uh, very sad. And I, you know, it, it, but, but I totally understand it. Um, and I wish, I, I think there's not much to do except for realizing that it is normal. And a lot of the other uh, issues I struggled with were also uh, lightened a little bit when I found out it was not my own issue, but, 
you know, it was something that had to do with the illness, with the whole, the whole situation. There are times when you just don't know how to take care of yourself because it's too much. And one of these times of periods was when Suleika was hospitalized. My husband was uh, back home teaching and I was, we were staying with friends nearby, but the friends were away. And I would walk back from the hospital each night, walking down Madison Avenue and thinking I was totally drained, exhausted because I wasn't sleeping enough, totally worried. And, um, and I was thinking, what can I do to feel better? So I would go in my in my head through what what do I, what do I, I just needed. It's almost like you're just a little bit underneath the water. What do you do to just breathe a little bit? So I was thinking about do I call friends? That's too exhausting. So I would go, you know, go to the movies. No, that's too too overwhelming. And nothing seemed to be desirable in a way so I kept going there. and but I noticed day after day that at some point during that walk back to our friend's apartment I would have this feeling of breathing a little better of, of relative lightness uh, and it was always at the same point in my walk back and then I just noticed I was passing by a window to a gallery that was selling antiques and they had a beautiful um um, Buddhas um, that were really like masterpieces that were sitting in that window and that the kind of peacefulness or the harmonious curves or who knows maybe something else was kind of kind of catching me maybe like caressing me a little bit and passing and was making me feel better and I said oh my goodness that's art um, so I started going to the mat because it was nearby, and I would go and look at one painting at a time, because that's all I could do. Uh, so my surprise was that um, art, I knew that creating art, being creative was helpful, like we talked about with the 100-day project or being in my studio, but I didn't think that consuming art from the other side would also have this effect. And I'm an artist, I should believe in art, but somehow I thought art, when there are emergencies, when things are too much, you know, that's something you, art is something for when um, you have time for art. But it turned out it was not the case. And that was the one thing that made me feel better. I would go and look at the, the girl with the pearl earring by Vermeer, uh, because it reminded me of Suleika and, and all the, the, you know, the relationship between light and dark that he works on. Um, and uh, so what I want to talk about is that what, what I want to say is that Sometimes we don't even know what is going to make us feel better, but we have to be maybe observant of, of these tiny little things that happen and then activate them. So that was one.